In the last few years, the scientists have learned quite a lot about the idea of stellar encounters. Basically stars passing really close to other stars and potentially disturbing them in some way or another, and maybe even disturbing their formation. And actually that's really where most of these particular observations have been seen so far, when a newly developing star changes in some way or another because of a disturbance from another object that passes nearby. Which according to the scientists from previous papers we've discussed and that should be in the description below, does influence the formation of planetary system afterwards and actually influences the structure and the composition of planets. Something that the scientists implied might have even happened to the solar system four and a half billion years ago. And that shouldn't really come as a surprise. Stellar flybys happen quite regularly. As a matter of fact, one of the previous papers even implied it might happen as often as every 50,000 years. And that's for our own solar system. But the thing is, most of these stellar flybys don't really influence the solar system very much. They might shift the orbits of some of the more distant objects, so for example in this case very far away comets, but they are not going to be influencing anything closer to planet Earth. And more specifically, they are not really going to be affecting any of the planets. And historically, based on some of the evidence from previous studies, we know that at least one major flyby happened approximately 70,000 years ago. A flyby from a star known as the Schultz star, also known as Y0720-0846. A star that's currently 22 light years away from us, but that was within about 0.8 light years away from us approximately 70,000 years ago and might have actually been even visible to some of the earlier humans. And when I say visible, I mean it actually looked really visible. They definitely could tell it in the night skies and it very likely looked like some kind of a really bright red object. Mostly because this is a red dwarf star. But we know that this passage did not affect the planets, even though it might have affected some of the outer asteroids. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be discussing this idea, the idea of flybys from different stars and more specifically the idea of the stability of the solar system when these flybys do happen after millions and millions of years. In other words, we're going to try to answer the question of is the solar system going to be affected in any dramatic way by the passages of any of these stars that could maybe shift one of the planets so much that it can then start colliding other planets into one another. In other words, can the solar system be kind of destroyed in a sense? But the answer is definitely no, and we know this based on the observations from so many different stars out there. But in this case the scientists went a little bit further. In this case they relied on very complex computer simulations of orbital parameters in order to essentially establish how long it would take for the solar system to finally become unstable and to start losing some of its planets or potentially have planets collide. With all of this mostly based on the new data available from the iconic Gaia telescope. The telescope that has been actively mapping the entire galaxy and the very accurate motion of various stars in our galaxy. In the process creating a super accurate 3D map of a lot of objects around us. With the study in the end establishing that, well, we pretty much have nothing to worry about. But let's talk about the facts. So first of all we know that there's going to be a major passage very close to the solar system in the next 1.3 million years. We've talked about this before, but this is from a star known as Gliese 710, a star that's slightly smaller than our own sun, but it's actually going to approach the solar system really close, 16% of a light year, or about 10,500 astronomical units away from the sun, which in theory has a chance to disturb a lot of different objects in the Oort cloud and maybe even destabilize objects with much farther away orbits. But we know that it's not going to affect any of the planets at all. All of this is based on very thorough calculations and simulations from a lot of different studies. We actually talked about this in one of the previous videos that should be in the description. However, we also know that if a close by passage does happen, it does have a potential to disturb the star system quite dramatically and destabilize a lot of the planets, possibly even causing collisions. As a matter of fact, with a lot of younger systems that usually form in very large star clusters, it's quite common to experience a lot of these passages early on, which then sort of determine what sort of stars and even what sort of planets form in a lot of these star systems. And that's actually really interesting because today we believe that the solar system is the way it is because of these early passages and all of these early interactions. 
For example, signs from various meteorites have already suggested that there was a major passage approximately 4.5 billion years ago. Once again, the video should be in the description. We sound these passages interacting with the star in just the right way to maybe then kickstart life on some of these planets. At least that's some of the conclusions that the scientists came to from some of these previous studies. But all of this only happens in the first 100 million years of the formation of a typical star system. What about after that? Well, once the star system develops, and once the star escapes its original cluster and becomes its separate object, these passages decrease quite dramatically, especially on the outskirts of a typical galaxy, such as where we are located right now. And so, because of these early passages, the solar system ended up having the planets that we currently have. They're quite unique and quite different from everything else we've detected so far, but the reason they exist is very likely because of these early passages. Other stars with a lot of other unique planets might have experienced different passages or different interaction with different stars, which basically ends up mixing the uh, protoplanetary disk and creating very specific types of planets depending on the interaction. With certain types of interactions, then also removing some of the outer planets, turning them into what we refer to as the rogue planet. The kind of a loner traveling across the galaxy, never to be seen again. And we've actually found quite a few of these already. But all of this still relies on what's known as the antibody problem and the ideas of chaotic interactions. It's still kind of challenging to truly determine what's going to happen to a star system if it essentially interacts with another star. And so in this case, a combination of a statistical analysis using a very complex Canadian supercomputer, along with various numerical methods developed over the past 50 years, the scientists were able to work out some of the answers to these questions. With the first obvious question being, will the solar system remain relatively stable for the foreseeable future? And the answer here is definitively yes. By running these computer simulations, the scientists determined that one of the biggest concerns in our solar system is actually planet Neptune. Neptune is the most likely planet to be disturbed by some of these passages, and its shift in orbit, in theory, might produce the most effects. In other words, if Neptune changes its orbit, it might affect Uranus, which then might affect Saturn, which then will affect Jupiter, and so on. And in this case, the orbit of Neptune only has to be shifted by approximately 0.1% or about 0.03 astronomical units in order to affect the entire solar system. And so by shifting Neptune just a little bit, it can become possible to destabilize the entire solar system with planets then colliding into one another. But the question is, could any of the stellar flybys cause this? And their simulations determined that, in theory, the answer is yes but it would take at least 100 billion years for this to happen, or potentially happen with about 10% chance. Or in other words, it would actually take much, much longer than the actual lifetime of the solar system for any of the nearby stars, or even faraway stars, to potentially start affecting the orbits of the planets of the solar system and to maybe destabilize it enough to affect planet Earth. And so we're pretty safe for at least 100 billion years. After that, well, it's not really certain. But since our sun only really has about 10 billion years left in it, it's not really a concern for the foreseeable future. And because of the iconic Gaia telescope, at the moment all of these observations are extremely accurate, meaning that we very likely have nothing to worry about for millions or even billions of years. And based on the previous studies from other stars that passed close to the solar system, the scientists have definitively determined that these passages generally only affect some of the outer comets or outer asteroids in the solar system. And though some of them could make their way toward planet Earth and potentially collide with planet Earth, even the chance of that is relatively low as well. In other words, at the moment, none of this should really matter to us because it's very likely not going to affect anyone or anything anytime soon. But at least for now, that's all we know. Once the scientists discover something else about these star passages or how they might affect some of the other objects, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. I'm actually personally really more interested in how this might have affected the early solar system in order to kickstart the life on our planet. For now we don't really know much, but there are new studies coming out every year, so we might find out something about this in the future. On that note, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership 
or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye bye.